So the New York Times released an article talking about a couple of investigations that are currently ongoing with Hunter Biden. One of them is about um, him not paying his taxes. Now, he didn't pay his taxes for a while, but then eventually he did pay it after it was clear that, you know, the uh, the government was looking into the fact they didn't pay his taxes. So that's one aspect of the story. And then the other aspect of the story is Hunter Biden refusing to register as a foreign agent, even though he was effectively acting as a foreign agent with all these international business dealings that he has. Now, in in the process of writing this story, uh, there was an admission from the New York Times that, indeed, the Hunter Biden laptop, which is a story that came out and broke uh, right before the election of, of 2020, they verified and confirmed that the laptop is indeed his, and the stuff that came out of there is indeed real. Now, why does this matter? Well, this matters because at the time, at the time, uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook, they they banned the story. I think it was the New York Post that um, originally got their hands on it, and then also I think the Daily Mail uh, had their hands on it at some point. And so these stories were coming out right before the election, and social media just banned the story. And they made the argument, hey, this is, uh, this is unverified, and this is, some made the argument, it's Russian disinformation, and so they didn't allow anybody to share it on social media. You couldn't even DM it to somebody else. So that is, it's astonishing how far the crackdown has gone, and how authoritarian that is, where you're basically banning the free flow of information in a way that could clearly impact the outcome of the presidential election. I will say, uh, even though in theory it can impact the outcome of the election, I don't think, even if they allowed this story to stay up, I really don't think it would have changed the outcome of the election. I don't. Um, I really think it was an election more about um, COVID, <clears throat> and it was about returning to normal. And so Biden, I think, would have pulled it out either way. But look, that's irrelevant. The fact of the matter is, as a matter of principle, they should have let the story stay up. Now, there are aspects of the Hunter Biden story that I think are are useless. Uh, like, for example, everything about his personal life, everything about his drug addiction, everything about the sex, all the shirtless pictures of him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I know that that's salacious and that's what gets the clicks. But it is also uh, a wanton violation of privacy for somebody who's not a politician, not a, a, a public figure in the sense that he impacts policy for the country. So running those stories, I think, is ethically questionable. If I was at the New York Post or Daily Mail or anywhere, I don't think I would have put that stuff out there. But, but, there is an aspect of the story that's real as a heart attack. And that aspect is the financial corruption that we learned about as a result of the laptop. Because that does affect policy, that does directly implicate politicians. So that stuff should have been allowed to run, of course, of course. So, let me give you some of the specifics here. Let me throw that first article up on screen. The New York Times quietly deleted, this is in Yahoo, the New York Times quietly deleted its assertion that an October article from the New York Post about the business dealings of Joe Biden's son, Hunter, was unsubstantiated in the reworked report, the outlet reported on a Federal Election Commission decision that dismissed a Republican complaint arguing Twitter violated election laws by blocking users from sharing the story during the heat of the 2020 election. When the New York Times posted the report early Monday afternoon, it read, quote, the Federal Election Commission has dismissed Republican accusations that Twitter violated election laws in October by blocking people from posting links to an unsubstantiated New York Post article about Joseph R. Biden Jr.'s son, Hunter Biden. A tweet from the outlet's main account, which started trending on Twitter, similarly called the New York Post article an unsubstantiated article. New York, New York Times national political reporter Shane Goldmacher, who wrote the initial draft, similarly called it unsubstantiated. So what happened is, and they go on in the Yahoo piece to explain this, after it was indeed verified by the New York Times, it was confirmed that this laptop is real, the stuff in it is real which again, they're months late, but they did it. They admitted it. A bunch of old tweets from New York Times and others resurfaced on Twitter. People were retweeting it and going after them because they were saying it's unsubstantiated, it's not verified, it's Russian disinformation, it's this, it's that. So what they did is they went back and, and I think they deleted some stuff, but they also went into the articles and changed around the wording without like letting people know that's what they were doing. So if people go back and click on the article they changed it and cleaned it up to more reflect reality. And again, they did it without an editor's note or anything. Okay, that super ethically questionable. They're just trying to cover their ass here. 
but everybody, it's like the Streisand effect. Now everybody knows that you're doing it because you're calling more attention to it by not being open and upfront about it. And it's not, it's not good. It's not good. So, um, let me show you the next graphic here. See, this is in the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail also verified the laptop's authenticity at the time. And here were some of the stories that came out of it. This is what they covered. Joe Biden entertained Hunter's Mexican billionaire business associates in the vice president's office in 2014 and even flew with his son to Mexico City on Air Force Two so Hunter could attend meetings over a flippin' gigantic deal. That's one. Emails contradicting White House denials show that Joe Biden met with Hunter's foreign business partners while he was VP during a dinner organized by his son to introduce potential clients to his powerful father. That's another one. Hunter Biden was hired by a Romanian real estate tycoon to overturn his bribery conviction through a massive propaganda campaign with help from VP Joe's government connections and former FBI director, Louis Free. That's another one. Louis Free gave $100,000 to a private trust for Joe's grandchildren and spoke with the then vice president in 2016 to explore lucrative future work options with Hunter as the middleman. It's so another one. Hunter's close relationship with Blue Star Consulting Firm under federal investigation for its involvement with controversial Ukrainian gas company Burisma. Remember, he got paid to be on a Ukrainian gas company. Another one. Hunter was deeply involved with the firm at the center of a scheme to defraud Native Americans for millions of dollars despite later distancing himself. How Hunter and his father paid each other's bills and even shared bank accounts, raising the prospect of the president being embroiled in the FBI probe. How Hunter repeatedly dodged police action against him, despite constantly dealing with drug pushers and prostitutes and having multiple run-ins with law enforcement. And then finally, five members of the Biden family have been to rehab for drug or alcohol abuse. So, okay, let's go through this. So the drug and alcohol one, look, I don't, I don't think the New York Post or the Daily Mail or anybody should have run stories on the drug and alcohol abuse. Anything that's on the personal side that came out of that laptop, anything about drug addiction or sex or personal struggles... Uh, to me, that crosses a line, because again, Hunter's the son of the president, so he's not, that's not in the public interest to know about his personal life. Everybody knows, based on previous reporting and things that are open, that he's a giant piece of shit. Like, the guy, like, his brother died, and then he slept with his brother's former ex-wife, and then also ended up sleeping with her sister. Like, we get it, we get it, we get it. The guy is very questionable ethically and morally. I got it. Um, but this stuff is not in the public interest, and if anything, you give your opponents and your enemies an argument of, well, you're violating his privacy, so now we have a right to pull down your articles and not allow people to share them. You're giving them an argument where there shouldn't be an argument. So if I had my hands on the laptop and I was a, an editor at some big publication, I would have said, just all the personal stuff, just get it out, get it out, get it out. Don't show the pictures, don't talk about the sex, don't talk about the rehab, don't talk, like, that's just not, it's not relevant, it's not pertinent. It's salacious, but people don't have a right to know that. And I'm sure Hunter was like, I don't want people knowing that shit. And so somebody gets in his laptop, even though he made a stupid mistake by leaving it there, you know, he should have the veto power on that. I don't want you showing that. But with everything involving the corruption, there is no argument for not running that. And there certainly is no argument for, you know, having the social media companies ban it right before an election. That's just election engineering. And that's also authoritarian censorship. There's no two ways about it. Now... I should also note, because this is super important, some of those stories about the corruption, Joe Biden actually didn't end up following through on any of the things that were like potential deals that Hunter was trying to set up. So on the ones that Joe Biden didn't do anything, he's not guilty because he didn't follow through on any sort of a deal. He didn't make any sort of a deal where somebody's getting favors because Hunter brought this to Joe Biden's attention and so now... Biden is using the power of the government to deliver. That, like, that didn't happen with a lot of those uh, headlines and a lot of those stories that they were going through. So on that front, you got to say, Hunter is attempting to be massively corrupt. Hunter, you know, wants to use his dad's power and influence for personal gain. But if Joe didn't deliver, then Hunter is just the fail son who's trying to get his dad to be more unethical, and Joe is not complying with that. Now, having said that, I'm sure... And you'd have to go through each story with a fine-tooth comb and, and, you know, figure out all the details, and this would have to be proven. But if indeed there were some deals that went through that were questionable ethically, then that is condemnable. And maybe there are actual legit crimes there, crimes of bribery and corruption. I mean, look, don't get it twisted. The whole Burisma story is insane. Hunter Biden taking gargantuan amounts of money to sit on a Ukrainian 
in on a Ukrainian natural gas company's board when he doesn't know anything about natural gas and doesn't even speak the fucking language. Like, what's that about? That is trying to buy favor in the American government. That is what that is. Don't don't get it twisted. And that needs to be criticized. That needs to be condemned. And you can't just swat that all aside and say that's all a right wing conspiracy theory. Really. All of the emails, all the dirt that came out of this. I agree with you, the personal stuff shouldn't have been printed. And I agree that probably a number of the things that they're saying, oh, this, this is a corrupt deal. If Biden didn't do anything on the front and he basically told his idiot son, I'm not going to do this, fuck off, then Biden's vindicated on that. But if there's some stuff, and there is with Burisma, et cetera, where there are corrupt dealings going on, well, of course that's in the public interest. Of course the public should know. And of course there should be accountability here. This Honestly, what this reminds me a lot of is... Um, number one, the Clinton Foundation and how, you know, the Clinton Foundation was taking hundreds of thousands of dollars and or millions of dollars from various governments that are authoritarian, repressive, theocratic, etc. And then they would deliver, Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State would then turn around and deliver a weapons deal to these people after they just gave, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to Bill through the Clinton Global Initiative. Okay, well that's rank corruption and it's open and it's obvious for everybody to see and people on the Democratic side would try to swat that aside and say no that, that, that doesn't count for reasons X, Y, and Z because something something philanthropy charity fuck off no that does count and that's not acceptable and that's not allowed and that shouldn't be allowed it also reminds me of you know uh, everything that went on with Trump's businesses oh I put my stuff in a blind trust first of all no he didn't second of all even if he did that's not enough to guarantee like there's not going to be any corruption third of all we already know Trump took over $300,000 from the Saudi Arabian government through his hotel in D.C. And then he turned around and delivered on a multi-billion dollar weapons deal for Saudi Arabia. And that's just one example. The examples are endless of, you know, you do some business deal with me and then we return the favor using the power of the federal government. Like, so in other words, the point I'm trying to make here is virtually every single, um, you know, prominent politician with this position of power and the president, their families are are entangled in some very questionable things and they're using their power and influence in nefarious ways and it's it's got a clean house man we need strong anti-corruption laws that are actually enforceable the bar of like there needs to be a quid pro quo is too high of a bar because nobody ever says that nobody ever says if i give you this will you do that for me that's a quid pro quo everything's sort of under the table and it's a wink and a nod and so you can't really crack down on any of this stuff unless you uh you know change the law in that respect and have stronger anti-corruption laws and anti-bribery laws. And this, the idea of the revolving door is, is a catastrophe. The idea that the family members of politicians can do things like this and get away with it is insane. And the main point that I want to stress yet again for everybody is this is not a partisan thing. It's not because some people will listen to this and say, say the Bidens are corrupt and, and end the conversation there. It's like, actually, no, the Biden, Bidens are corrupt, the Trumps are corrupt, the Clintons were corrupt, uh, the Obama corruption was slightly different in, in its nature because there wasn't, obviously Malia and Sasha were not <laughs> going around and, and making corrupt deals, but his was more the typical accepted Washington corruption of campaign contributions than I deliver for you because you guys paid me, having Citigroup appoint like basically his entire cabinet. So the, like the corruption is thick, it's deep, it's horrendous and it needs to be stopped and unfortunately instead of the media fighting on the side of the people and exposing this stuff and holding people accountable and giving them context and perspective and facts and information what does the media do the media tried to bury this story social media banned it and then by the way there was another story new york post reached out to a lot of the uh, u.s intelligence officials who, when this story came out, there were a number of U.S. intelligence officials who were like, that has the hallmark of Russian disinformation. Fake news. Russian disinformation. And they reached out to them and said, look, New York Times verified it. They confirmed it. So are you going to apologize? Would you like to revise anything you said? And basically all of them were like... So you have the intelligence agencies, the government, the corporate media, and everybody under the sun, social media, everybody's trying to hide the reality from you and pretend like, oh, everything's serious and on the up and up and your government's not totally corrupt. Wrong. They are. And that is definitely something that not only we need to talk about, but we need to fix. And it would be nice if we had some of the institutions on our side, again, like the media. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. 
If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.